ripped moorings off Margate by forced 10 winds yesterday afternoon. Late last night, she was driven six miles inshore onto the notorious Long Sand. A crew of four were picked up in mountainous seas by the Sheerness lifeboat after completing their last broadcast just after midnight. The Caroline's crew, including the disc jockeys, later reported to the Sheerness police where they were questioned as to possible breaches of the 1967 Marine Broadcasting Act. It's been an offence since then for anyone to listen to the 24-hour-a-day pop music broadcast in Britain. Caroline, which launched the careers of Simon D and Tony Blackburn, has been operating on a shoestring budget for the past decade. The Mi Amigo crew abandoned ship last January when the ship sprang a leak in a similar storm off the east coast. One of the survivors of today's shipwreck, disc jockey Mr Stevie Gordon, is with me now. Mr Gordon, what were you doing when you noticed things weren't all they might have been? I'm sorry to say I was asleep. I was awoken by other members of the crew who said we have an emergency. And what happened then? Well, straight away we uh, started to lower the emergency anchor. Uh, but unfortunately, by the time we'd stopped the ship, it was on the sandbank. And how long had that... How much time had elapsed from you first realising that this was going to be uh, a disaster that you might have to get off? Well, we didn't realise right until the end, until about 10 o'clock last night, that we might have to go off. Uh, as the tide came up and the ship started banging on the bottom, we realised there was a possibility of springing a plate or something similar. What were the conditions like? Quite bad, quite bad. And then had you sent out a, a distress call at that stage? Uh, no, we notified the Coast Guard after we'd stopped the ship moving and uh, advised them of our new position and so on. What did they say to you? Uh, they asked us if we were all right and if we requ required assistance. We said, no, not at this time, but maybe you'd like to stand by, and they said yes. And then when, when was the decision actually taken to go? Just before midnight. And were you on the air up till that time? We were running uh, tape programmes because we didn't have uh, any time to put on our normal live broadcasts. And we just went in and made a very brief announcement to say goodbye. And the Sheerness lifeboat showed up? Yes, it was standing by from about 9pm, in fact. And there were no problems getting on board there? It was quite difficult. The seas were very bad, but the uh, li lifeboat crew did a first-rate job in getting us off. Do you expect uh, legal action against you now that you've, uh, you're back on the mainland, back with your feet on the ground? Well, I, d I don't really know. Um, normally we don't come into the United Kingdom. We tender from Spain, and so far we haven't had any problems. But as we've been taken off into England, I don't know what will happen now. What did the police say to you when they questioned you? They were quite friendly to us. They uh, told us that they'd been asked by the Home Office to take our names and addresses, and they asked for details of the organisation and so on. Very briefly, is, is this the end for Radio Caroline? Well, we have a habit of coming back. I hope we can once more. Stevie Gordon, thank you very much. In London. The news at 5.45 with Leonard Parkin. The Lamb War. Walker tells the French, you obey the rules or get out of the market. Radio Caroline, the pirate pop ship, sinks in a gale. Slimmer of the year because she looked at herself... Radio station Radio Caroline. The ship, called the Mi Amigo, now lies in the Thames estuary between Essex and Kent. The crew of four were rescued by the Sheerness lifeboat. Prakash Merchandani reports. The Mi Amigo started dragging its anchor in 12-foot waves yesterday afternoon. Finally, the anchor, which once belonged to a supertanker, snapped. The ship's engines were out of order and it grounded on a sandbank. The Coast Guard decided to evacuate and the rescue took place just after midnight. The crew... Three Englishmen, one Dutchman and Wilson the Canary were brought back to Sheerness. Believe it or not, nobody panicked. It was uh, very orderly. Uh, everybody worked very hard. There was a lot to be done, so there wasn't much time to actually panic. We were resting on the sandbank, and it was when we came off of the sandbank and were hitting the bottom of the ship with the sandbank that um, the holes began to appear in the generator room. Were you broadcasting all the way through this? Yeah, sure. Radio Caroline has had a checkered pirate career since it pioneered pop radio in the early 60s. Many of its DJs found a home in the BBC's Radio 1 after pirate stations were banned. Two years ago, the ageing Mi Amigo returned to the Kent coast. Its crew have already been rescued once before, and it's also been the scene of a mutiny attempt. But, say its wet, though undeterred DJs, it will be back. Gale in the Thames estuary. The ship, officially called the Mi Amigo, was swept from her moorings off Margate late last night. 
She sank on the notorious Long Sand in the early hours. The four crew members were picked up in mountainous seas by the Sheerness lifeboat. All you could see of the Mi Amigo today as she slowly sank was her mast. Earlier, as the sea gushed in, the crew had been forced to abandon her and £100,000 worth of equipment, but not before saying farewell to their half-million listeners. Not a very good occasion, really. I have to hurry this because the lifeboat is standing by. We're not leaving and disappearing. We're going onto the lifeboat, hoping that the pumps can take it. Um, if they can, we'll be back. If not, well, I don't like to say it. I, I think, think we'll be back one way or another, yeah, Tom. I think so. From all of us, for the moment, goodbye and God bless. Radio Caroline started broadcasting its pop music in 1964 and was rapidly followed by a succession of pirate radio ships until they were outlawed three years later. But the Caroline crew carried on broadcasting illegally and fairly profitably until last night, in spite of having to abandon ship last year in a similar storm. The saddened Tony Blackbourne was one of well, their first no, it's DJs. It's a shame because it's the end of an era. Uh, to me, it gave, it gave me everything I've now got. And all it did really was to give people a lot of pleasure. And I can't the Amigo get... broke from its moorings in last night's gale force winds and drifted onto a sandbank. The four-man crew were rescued unharmed by lifeboat, but could now face prosecution. Here's Tim Child. Only the top of Radio Caroline's transmitting mast was still showing above the waves this afternoon. Early today, the 400-ton motor vessel Mi Amigo was torn loose from its moorings 12 miles off Clacton. The ship drifted helplessly in the Force 9 winds, ran aground on a sandbank and was then submerged by the huge waves. The CNS lifeboat rescued the four-man crew even bringing off their canary. Their ordeal ended at Sheerness Police Station, where they were questioned for some time before being released. The sinking seems to be the end of the original and most successful of the pop radio pirates. Caroline first went on the air in 1964 and survived a series of disasters. She was off the air for five years after the government cracked down on the pirates with the Marine Broadcasting Officers Act. Several times, the battered 50-year-old boat drifted, nearly sank or ran aground. There were cash problems, prosecutions, even a threatened hijacking, and lifeboat men called the ship a death trap after an earlier rescue operation. After today's rescue, Carol Barnes spoke to one of the survivors in our London studio. It was very, very wild. We had about two foot of water in the ship, in the bilges, and uh, the weather forecast was that the uh, seas were going to get worse and we thought it would be better to go into the lifeboat. So what did you do at that point? Well, the lifeboat had been standing by for about two and a half to three hours, and they had been urging us to come up, although we had declined their offer. And uh, then we called back and said, well, OK, I think we're ready to go now. You must have been terrified. I think we were all too busy to be scared, but we were all shaking a bit afterwards when we got in the lifeboat. Was it difficult to get aboard? Yes, it was very hard. And it took about half an hour to 45 minutes to get everybody on board. Just from the ship to the lifeboat? Yeah, sure. Because of the sea? Yeah. What did you do before you left the ship? Um, well, the last thing we did was go down into, into the studio and stop the tapes, and we cut in the microphone and made a live announcement to the uh, fact that we were going off the air uh, due to the uh, weather conditions and so on, and we were having to abandon ship. We asked our listeners not to worry, said goodbye. What did you, actually, it off. What did you actually say? Um, I said, uh, I think I said something like, uh, we hope to be back with you as soon as possible. Um, goodbye for now, something like that. Do you expect any legal action to follow this business? I don't know. Um, this is the first time I've, I've been into the United Kingdom uh, for a long time. We usually operate out of Spain, where our head office is, and we're serviced from there. And uh, most of us live on the continent. Um, probably now that the ship's gone down, I don't think so. Why not? Well, there doesn't seem to be very much point in it. We're not going to go back again, are we? Carol Barnes was talking there to Stevie Gordon, a Radio Caroline disc jockey. And its resident disc jockeys sank last night after breaking her moorings in heavy gales. A report from Roger Maynard. This was all that could be seen of the Mi Amigo today, a solitary transmitter mast poking through the heavy seas. It was a fitting memorial to the end of an era. Almost 16 years ago to the day, Radio Caroline went on the air off the Essex coast and continued transmitting until midnight last night. 
The 50-year-old vessel snapped her moorings in yesterday's Force 9 gales about 15 miles off Wharton on the Nays. Her crew of four were rescued after she went aground on the treacherous Long Sands. Well, Tom Edwards from Norwich was a disc jockey on Radio Caroline in those early days, and he's in our London studio. Is it a sad day for you, John? Uh, Tom? It is indeed, Roger, um, even more so because today happens to be my birthday and for once I looked into my horoscope and it said you're going to be hearing some surprising news uh, about an old friend and, of course, it was so long amigo. A very sad day, I think. Did you have any nasty moments while you were on the ship? Not really. The only one occasion that I can remember quite vividly was the tender trip from Felixstowe, it was, out to uh, Radio Caroline itself, sometimes took up to three hours, especially in rough weather, which the boys on board had last night, obviously. And I remember doing a Force 10 gale, having to gauge a jump, literally from the side of the tender, onto the ship itself, and slipped, and went in between the uh, two sides of the ships. And it was a case of either being crushed to death or drowned. And it was one of those unfortunate occasions, and I still haven't done anything about it. I just simply cannot swim. <laughs> still, I was very lucky they pulled me out of the drink. So you didn't, have to learn to swim. you didn't have to learn to swim before you could get a job on board? No, you didn't. <laughs> what was it like working as a DJ on Radio Caroline? The living conditions, Roger, were quite good. Um, we used to spend two weeks on board with one week shore leave, and believe us, we were really ready for that. Um, you had to live in a very tight community, um, and if you didn't happen to like either one of your fellow disc jockeys or one of the crew members, well, that was just too bad, because whether you liked it or not, you were stuck with them for a fortnight. What were the facilities like on board? The facilities were good. You could have showers, baths, um, all the cigarettes and lagers you could get through, um, colour television. We could pick up, obviously, Look East and one or two other stations as well, just by turning the area around in the bows of the ship. So it was quite comfortable, especially in the summer when we could sunbathe. And they produced, or Radio Caroline in particular, produced a lot of talent, didn't it? It did indeed. Um, I worked alongside people, somebody you might have heard of, called Tony Blackburn, who seems to have done grand things, Dave Lee Travers, who you can hear every weekday morning on Radio 1. And it's nice to be back here at the BBC, I must confess, on terra firma, not tossing up and down on the North Sea. I much prefer, rather prefer it here in the safety of Broadcasting House. How important was Radio Caroline to your own career? It taught me a great deal. I'd known nothing about uh, the art of disc jockeying at all, and I think the public were quite surprised. There were some bad disc jockeys and some pretty good ones. Um, the public had never heard anything like it. With due respect to the BBC, they were pumping out light music on the old light program, and all of a sudden you tuned to 194 metres medium wave and heard all this shouting, ranting and raving, and loud commercials and loud pop music, and everybody says, ah, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. And it hasn't been the same since. Tom, it thank hasn't. you very much indeed. Nice to talk to you again. Well, I can tell you all of us on Look East are very sad to hear about Radio Caroline. Well, now, go for... I don't know if you've ever heard Radio Caroline broadcasting.